Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to learn about button shortcut keys. I'm going to first teach you how to use the default and cancel properties to open and close a form. And then I'm going to teach you how to assign custom shortcut keys to buttons to push those as well. This is great for people who do a lot of data entry and don't want to have to stop and grab the mouse to click on buttons. Today's question comes from Aaron in Jupiter, Florida, not too far from me. Aaron says, I have a form that I'm constantly opening to perform data entry, and then when I'm done, I have to stop, grab the mouse, click a close button, and repeat. It'd be great if I could do all of that without having to break my stride on the keyboard to grab the mouse. Can we open and close forms using just keystrokes? Well, yes, of course, Aaron, you can. Let me show you a couple options. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want a copy. And if you want to learn how I built it, go watch this video. It's free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. There's a link right there. I'll put a link down below you can click on as well. So let's go into the customer form and let's go to the contact form. This is where you type in all the information about each contact with that customer. And let's say you do a lot of data entry. You do a lot of typing into this form. So let's, let's adjust it just a little bit. Let's come in here and I am going to, let's make this bigger. Uh, I'm just gonna move follow up up out of the way up here. Maybe take that label and put it up top with a little cut and paste, right? We'll slide that over here like that. And then now uh, let's get this customer ID out of here. I'm just gonna put it up there. It's red because it's hidden, which I covered in that video. And then we're gonna take this field here and make it nice and big. Let's say we do a lot of typing, a lot of data entry in this guy right there. Okay, make it that big. All right, I'm gonna save that. And then I'll just close this guy and open it back up so you can see what we're dealing with. Okay, so I want to come down here now and type in a whole bunch of notes. All right, typing in a bunch of notes, typing in a bunch of notes, typing in a bunch of notes. And then when I'm done, without having to stop and grab the mouse, I just want to move on to, you know, the next record. Or I want to close this and go back to the customer form. Right now, if you know the keyboard shortcut Control F4, that will close a form. All right, that's a training issue. And you could put a note right down here on the bottom, right? Press Control F4 to close, but it's not, that's not very elegant. So let's make some buttons to do this stuff too. So right click Design View. Let's put a button down here to close this form. So grab the Command button off the toolbar, drop it right there. Now, yeah, I, I tend to avoid the wizards, but for this one, it's a simple wizard, so we just use that. Form Operations, Close a Form. Next, I'm going to put the words Close Form on there. Next, let's give it a good name, Close Button, maybe. All right, and there we go. There's our close form button. All right, save that. I'll close it, open it back up again, and now I got a simple button that closes the form. Okay, very simple, straightforward stuff. Nothing new yet. Now, there are some properties that you can assign to these buttons. Go to the other tab over here. You'll see default and cancel. Default, if you assign this as the default button, that means when you press enter, it's going to click that button. Okay, and cancel means if you hit escape on your keyboard, it's going to press that button. So let's make this the default button. I'll hit yes. All right, save it, close it, open it up again. Okay, now watch. If I press enter on my keyboard, it closed the form, right? And that's good for any form where you've got, you know, normal text boxes here. However, that doesn't work if you're down here in a long text box, because if you're typing and you press enter, right, it goes to the next line. Enter goes to the next line. So that actually overrides the button. Now, you could change the properties of this text box. Design view. Go to here. There's enter key behavior, which says new line in a field. If you drop that down, you could say default, which is how the short text boxes work. Default means if you press enter, it's going to move to the next record like it does back here, right? If I'm sitting on Richard and I press enter, it goes to the next one. That's the default behavior, right? If, if access sees that's long text, it switches it, all right? And that will work. Save changes, yes. Come back over here, right? If I'm in here now and if I press enter, it pushed the button. But sometimes, or well, most of the time, when you're using long text, you want to be able to press enter in here. So now you got to teach your users to press control enter to get a new line. And again, that's counterintuitive. So we're not going to use that option. 
That's good for some forms, like this one. All right, as long as you're not in the notes field, you can press, you know, uh, uh, enter for a default button to close the form or push whatever button you want. All right, so let's go back into the properties. Let's go to this guy here. Let's put the enter key behavior back to new line in field. And this time, let's try the escape key. Let's try the, the cancel option. So I'm going to turn default off and let's say cancel is yes. So now that's going to that's going to tie this button to the escape key. Let's see what happens now. Save that. Close it. Open it back up again. OK. All right. Let me type in some new stuff. This is some new stuff. And let me hit the escape key. And great. It pushed the button. Seems like it worked just fine, right? Let's go back in there. And oh, wait a minute. All my old text is in there. Why is that? Well, when you cancel with the escape key, it doesn't save the record that you're editing. So be careful of that. That's a good way to pop something up. And then if the user doesn't want to save the changes, they can hit cancel, right? They can hit the escape key and it cancels that data entry. Okay. So that's not a good option for this either. You could put a cancel button down here if you want to, right? Go design view, do the same thing. In fact, I'll just copy this button. Watch this copy, paste, control C, control V. I'll come over here, right? And I'll put in cancel like that. All right. We'll call this the cancel button instead of command nine, right? Cancel button. And we'll go to other and we'll leave cancel set to yes on that guy. All right. You can only have one cancel and one default button on your form, by the way. So if you come over here, this guy's now been turned off. Okay. So this is the cancel button, which you might want to leave that there for your users, right? If I'm coming in here and I'm doing, you know, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I don't want to save that. Hit cancel. Boom. It doesn't save the record. So that, 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 that button has its, has its use, has its purposes, right? Okay, so for this form, neither enter or default nor cancel is going to work to do what we want to do. So we can assign a custom shortcut key, right? Click design view. And the way you do that is by looking at the caption of the button. Where's the caption property? Come here, right here. Caption property. It's, it's closed form right now. What we're going to do is we're going to put an ampersand in front of whatever character we want to make the shortcut key. So I'll go ampersand close. And now if you look over here, there's a little underline underneath the close button. Here, let me zoom in for you so you can see better. Okay, did an ampersand close. And now we got a little underscore under that C there. That's my shortcut key. What that means is you press alt, the alt key on your keyboard and that letter to push that button. Got it. Okay, save it now. Close it. Open it back up again. All right, I'm in here. I'm typing, 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 typing. And now Alt-C closes the form. Okay, and I can go back in by pressing spacebar because notice my my focus is still on that button. See the little dot, tiny dotted lines around it? That's how you can tell that button still has the focus. That's where the, the, the cursor basically sitting there. Press spacebar to push that button, and it opened up, and look at it, save my changes with that Alt-C. Do you have to put the ampersand in front of the first character? No, you can use any character in there, but you can only have the one character mapped per form. So you couldn't do Alt-C in front of cancel either. But you could do, you could do uh, like, uh, let's say Alt-F for this one, right? Close form like that. Now you got the ampersand, or, yeah, the ampersand's in front of the F, so that's your hotkey. And this guy could be, you know, C ampersand A like that. So Alt-A closes that one. See, save it, close it, contacts. If I come in here and go Alt-A, push the cancel button. If I go Alt-F, push the closed form. And yeah, if you hold down the Alt key long enough, these guys pop up. The little Alt helpers for the ribbon. All right, just don't hold the Alt key down that long. <laughs> okay. You can also use this trick to jump to fields inside a form, just to jump to a text box. Let's say, for example, that you're constantly jumping to uh, the email address, let's say. Watch this. Come in here, design view. The label, notice this label is attached to that text box. And in fact, if you click on the field here, you'll see the label name is label 23, which is that guy, right? They're, they're linked together. And if you have a label that's not linked to it, you can do it. There's here's a little shortcut for you. Let me cut that off. I just hit Control X and I pasted it. All right, so now I have an independent label. See that? All right, and then the little green hoo-hoo thingy tells you here that it's independent, right? Associate this label with a control. You can associate it with email that way, okay? Or another way to do it is you can simply just cut it, click on that field, and then paste it. That's the old school trick, 
Okay, now it's reassociated again. But anyways, that was a little tangent for you. But what you could do is, let's say you want to make this a shortcut key. So come in here in front of the E and go ampersand E for email. Now look at that. You got the little the little underscore there. See that? Save that. Close it. Close that. Come back in here. Now, no matter where you are on this form, if you want to jump to the email field, just go Alt E. Boom. There you go. See? A little shortcut trick there. All right. If you want to make this, you know, these buttons have shortcuts, right? We got C and O. And now you can jump all around your form, right? I can go Alt E to go to email, Alt C to open up contacts, escape to cancel that, Alt O to open up orders, right? I don't have any buttons on here, so but I remember Control F4 closes that. <laughs> don't mix that up with Alt F4, by the way. Alt F4 shuts down the whole application, so it'll shut down access altogether. Now, the trend today on web forms, on forms on web pages, is to use Control Enter to submit, right? YouTube uses it. Uh, a lot of other sites use it. So you're, you're done typing in your data. You press Control Enter to submit your form. I'm going to show you how to do that in the extended cut for the members. It's not as simple as just setting up an Alt key shortcut. We actually have to get into key preview, the key down event, learn what key codes are, and a little bit about bit masks. So lots of cool stuff. But what, you be, what you'll be able to do is at the end of typing in your stuff, you'll be able to hit Control Enter, and it'll push that closed form button. That's covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's like 300 of them now. And, uh, and you get some free classes with that too. You get a free class every month. And uh, gold members can download these databases. So what are you waiting for? It costs... Like the cup, cost of a cup of coffee to join. So join today, and you'll get my eternal gratitude as well. I got puppies to feed, so, you know, need more members. <laughs> more members I get, the more cool videos I make. So come on, join the party. But that is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. 
Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.